Welcome to All Things Possible TV. I'm excited to have you with me here today on this episode. The episode that we're going to be doing today is the seven cardinal rules in life. And I really want to just go into some detail of these seven cardinal rules that were put in place. I don't even know the author, but I know that they're important and I love the way they are and the way they're listed and we're going to jump in and just go a little bit deeper into those seven cardinal rules. But before we do so, I want to invite you to go to our website at www.allthingspossible.biz and get your free gift. I teach seven traits to live by, to have all things possible in your life and I want you to be able to go and get those for free. It comes to you as seven videos of the seven traits that I teach and that I keynote on all the time. I want you to have those. So go to our website and get your free gift. Okay, so let's go into this. The seven cardinal rules in life. Now, what is a cardinal rule? Well, it is a rule that's been in place that everyone feels is substantial and to be stood by. So what are the seven cardinal rules of life for us? We're going to go through each of these rules independently. I just recently returned from a retreat and at this retreat I had several people that came and stayed for three days and a couple of the traits that I teach and a couple of the things that we went into deeper levels with were seek for good and also to be happy and cheerful. That's two of the traits that I teach all the time. And in those traits, I brought out these seven cardinal rules because they fit very much in that be cheerful and happy and also with seeking for good. The more confidence you can have in yourself and the more assurance you can have in you, the more successful you will be. And when we live our life in accordance with what's going on in our reality, we have better success. So the seven cardinal rules that are out there for us in our world, the first one is make peace with your past. Now that, that really is important. When we let our past control our future, we are not very successful. We do not have to be defined by our past. So let me talk about that for a second. Are you so caught up in where you're at in your life with what's happened to you in the past? Have you been mistreated? Have you been abused? Did you have poor parenting? Did you have bad teachers? Did you have someone hurt you or make you feel less than? And are you using that as your criteria now in your life? Making peace with your past means forgiving and letting go. It does not mean forgetting. It does not mean being abused again or putting up with that behavior. It means letting go of it so it no longer affects you and your forward progress. It means allowing yourself to achieve anything that you want without being held back by what defines you from your past. What you've had in your past can determine your beliefs and the things that motivate you. And when we live in the past and fear, we don't accomplish things. When I was 14, I was attacked by some strangers who wanted to cause harm to me. When I let that control my future, my future did not look very good. I was scared of the dark. I was afraid someone was going to come out and grab me. So I had to learn how to let go of that. Did I actually get to make amends with those people? No, I made amends with me. I forgave the situation and let it go. That's a good example of how we can make peace with our past and move forward in our future. Possibly you have a relationship with a parent or an adult that was not a very good relationship and it's controlled a lot of how you are as an adult. The sooner you can let go of that and, and make peace with it, the faster you can move forward. Let's go to the second one. What others think of you is none of your business. Now, I brought that 
that one up at the retreat. And one of the people was like, what? But it's true. What other people think of you is none of your business. It doesn't matter if you like the color of my shirt or my necklace from Africa. It doesn't matter if you like my hair all pulled up or my hair down because that's your judgment. That's your criteria. That's your journey. That's not mine. My reality is my information. It's my circumstances and it's what I have and what's important to me. It has nothing to do with what you think. So what others think of you is really none of your business. It gets you to fall off of your journey and, and out of being in alignment with yourself. Their beliefs, their judgment, everything about them is going to be different than yours. So the sooner you can quit worrying and allowing other people's judgment to be a part of your decisions, the faster you can move forward. So yes, when people say things, it does come into us, but you're the one that allows it. So you have to learn to not allow it. One of the things that I did at this retreat was I walked over to one of my friends that was actually there as a, a client and said, well, I don't like your glasses. And the person next to her was like, how rude. And I said, but it doesn't matter if I like them. It matters if she likes them. They're her glasses. And I actually did like the glasses, but I brought it up as a reason for her to, to recognize it didn't matter if I liked them or not. I didn't pay for them. I don't wear them every day. It's not my colors. It didn't matter. And the sooner we figure out that it doesn't really matter, the better we are at being successful. Okay, number three. Time heals almost everything. What I can tell you is that when you will allow some time to lapse into that situation, it can get better. Now, this is very good with losing a loved one or a breakup of a relationship. Allow it to have time. Time does heal those wounds. Time does allow you to look at the perspective before you speak so that you're not creating bad feelings and saying something that you regret later. Time is a good healer to be able to look at things with a an actual perspective. Give, allow yourself to look at it with enough time to look at all the possibilities and to see things from a different point of view. So much of the time we jump to conclusions when we're hurried to make a decision or when we don't allow ourselves the time to really get all of the facts. And getting all of the facts is important. Knowing that you have the documentation or you have the information that you need. You don't have to rush to conclusions and you don't have to jump to those conclusions and create a bigger problem. Number four, no one is the reason for your own happiness. That one is huge. You are in charge of your happiness. You are the only one that can decide and choose if you are happy or sad, if you're happy with the situation. Now, all day long, people say, yeah, but, 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 yeah, I had no control over my child's decision. I had no control over what my spouse did. It wasn't my fault I was in the car accident. But what I can tell you is you're still a choice. You still have to choose if you're going to be happy or not. When I was in the hospital for 180 nights in 11 months with my child with cancer, I had to decide every single day. That was three or four days a week, minimum, that we were at the hospital. I had to decide every day the attitude I was going to show him and how he and I could get through that really difficult time. And when I chose an attitude of, oh my gosh, I'm tired and frustrated and this is just annoying and a pain, it did not serve us. It did not help him to be stronger. It did not help him when the chemotherapy came. He was sicker. And it was worse. We got no sleep. So actually taking control of choosing your happiness, choosing what you want, and having that commitment to joy and the world around you to be able to have peace, 
Have contentment and not always live in that chaos. The fifth one I want to talk about is don't compare your life with others. In our world right now, I say this a lot, but with social media, we go on Facebook and we compare our current situation with someone's post. And when we do that, it doesn't matter that that was their anniversary cruise and this great trip that they've saved for years and years and years to go on and they have this beautiful thing from Italy. It doesn't matter. We're comparing our worst point with their best. You know, if everybody would put a bloopers video up, we would continually get to see reality of where people are. And then when we had comparison, it might be better. But what I can tell you is comparison is the thief of joy. The more you compare yourself to someone else, the more you will fail. The more you compare yourself to anyone else's successes, the less successes you will have. Because you will never give credit to yourself. You need to have success for you. The only way for you to move forward and have better success is for you to celebrate the successes you are having and stop comparison. The only person you should compare yourself with is the mirror. Compare yourself to you. The only person you have to out achieve is yourself. Set your goal to be go to the next level the next day. Go to the next level in the next three months. Have a 90 day goal. But don't compare to other people. There is no comparison because you aren't on the same journey. You don't have the same circumstances. And it's not about comparing with each other. It's about being the best you you can be. It's about taking your life to the next level. It's not about comparing to someone else and where their life is. That's a huge one. And until we get to the point that we can actually go through our life and love where we are, the longer it's going to take. The sooner you can love where you are and love where you're headed, the sooner you can unconditionally love yourself. And then the more unconditional love you can give to others. Number six, stop thinking too much. How many of us get in our head about how long it's taking to do this, how much money we were supposed to make and we aren't there yet? How many times do we get in our head? At the retreat that I just got back from, we had several in the retreat that were so focused in their head, they had a hard time going to their heart and actually coming from a space of what they really want, what they value, instead of trying to think it through. We get caught up in our head and we get, the more pressure we put, the less answers we get. When we can go to our heart and we can go to our feelings instead of our thoughts, we will come up with the right answers. We will come up with the next direction. The more we can be patient and accept the next move that we are supposed to take, the sooner we will get the answer. When we get all caught up in what's next and how does this look and I don't know, we get frustrated, we get impatient, and we try to force something. When you try to force something, you don't have the same result. And forcing does not equal success. What I can promise you is when you force it, you don't have the right people in the room, you don't have the right, the right message being given. You need to just allow it to work. You need to be willing to allow it to be the best possible scenario for you. And number seven. Number seven is smile. You do not have all the problems in the whole world. Your problems aren't as bad as someone else's. I can guarantee that. In fact, when we went in the hospital for 180 nights, we went and visited other patients to give them a balloon. And that was one of the things that was proven over and over is that we were going to keep our own circumstances. We found a lot of people that had it a lot worse. And yes, we found a lot of people we had it a lot worse then, but we also found that as we put a smile on our face and as we were happy, it brightened the darkest days. 
it made our life more beautiful and more inspirational for us to move forward. The potential of our life to go the direction we wanted was so much better. And I see this every day as I spend time with clients and as we move people's lives forward with my husband and I in All Things Possible, a smile is the most contagious thing you can give. And it will brighten your day, it will brighten someone else's day, and it will give you a good perspective. Whenever we can strive to be the happiest possible, we will be healthier, happier, and more successful. I know that sounds like a cliche and like it's not really real, but try it. Try to go around grumpy and see what success you have. Try to go around being ticked, see what success you have. And then try to go around being happy and cheerful and smiling. Smiling is very important and your problems will not seem as big if you can find the happiness, look for the good things, look for the happy moments, find that gratitude. You know, as I was trying to find the author of the seven cardinal rules, I found it several different things, but one of the things that I found was someone that did an eighth one to it and she added gratitude. Now I teach gratitude all the time. Gratitude is one of my seven traits and gratitude is huge in my life and my clients' lives because what we're grateful for expands and we get more. And I continually teach that all the time. When we can be grateful for our circumstances, we can be grateful for what we have and the lessons we're learning, we will have better success. I hope you've enjoyed the seven cardinal rules. Maybe you had forgotten about them and it's a good reminder. These seven are easy to implement, easy to live by, and can give us happiness and joy. It also is a great reminder for us to align ourselves so that we can move forward and that we have better success. I want to offer you a strategy session with myself to do that, you need to go to the website at www.allthingspossible.biz and go to the Contact Us button. Send me a quick email that said, I would like to get my strategy session. I would love to work with you and to give you that free bonus as well as you can get your free seven traits and get on our email list to where you get the latest episodes. You get to have the latest material that we have out there and you get to continually have positive reinforcement of someone assisting you to take your life to the next level. Thanks for being here with me today on All Things Possible TV and we'll see you next time right here on All Things Possible. Thanks.